What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about a couple of trades that I made here today on the 8th of April in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the month of April in 2019. And also, we're going to be seeing how far are we from all-time highs here in the S&P, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. So stick a little bit later on in this video. We're going to be talking about that. But before we do get into these different topics, guys, all I ask from you viewers is if you enjoy the content here, you find value in these YouTube videos, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. It really does support me and supports the channel in general. And if you enjoy the channel and want to be connected with our community on a further basis, I have two links down below in the description box, one of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group. Both of those are 100% free of charge, and I guarantee you guys, you'll find value in those two communities. So let's talk about what is going on right now in the markets? We can see there's about 50 seconds left here until the market close. And the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the U.S. stock market is looking to close up about 0.1% only up about $2 and some change here with about 30 seconds left to market close. The NASDAQ composite right now is up about 0.25%, slightly of a better day here in the NASDAQ, up nearly $20. And the Dow Jones right now, guys, is actually down a little bit here, down nearly $90, down about 0.33% with about 10 seconds left to the market Close. So there's a couple of technical factors and uh, indicators here that I want to talk to you guys about. Here goes the bell. Um, in terms of the S&P 500. So we officially closed the day up about $3 here, up exactly 0.1%. And for those of you guys that have been following along with the channel, you've been following along with the stock market yourselves, we've been talking about how the SPX has broken above the 2860 level. That, that's old news at this point. That was a couple of days ago. From there, we've decided or really ended up forming another higher high, continuing the uptrend pattern. And this past Friday, we ended up breaking out of another resistance level. And today at the close of the market, we've confirmed that we're holding above that level at about 28.90. And I want to show you guys a technical um, spot here in the SPX that confirmed today that we're continuing this uptrend push. And that spot is going to be here on the five day, five minute. And I'm sure you can see it here on the 10 day as well. So for those of you guys that were paying attention, we actually gapped down this morning in the S&P 500. A lot of people in our group, including me, we thought, okay, this might be the day that we might sell off and see a bit of a pullback. But what do we notice here on this two on those two charts that I pulled up for you guys a couple of seconds ago is we see as we gap down here to 2880, we've really maintained the moving average support levels at a higher low from the previous low in terms of the S&P 500, and we ended up pushing to a higher high here on these smaller term charts. And that's telling me here on a technical perspective that the SPX simply pulled back this morning, saw that pullback that we needed to see on a smaller term basis here, and we continued the push to the upside as we bounced on the moving average. Average, right? The 180 simple moving average support level here. This is huge, guys. This is a huge, huge key that we can uh, want to continue to push up here on a technical basis. And if we hop over here to the 10 day, 30 minute chart, we can see the same thing. But instead of the 180 SMA here, we bounced on the 50 SMA as we gapped down this morning and we continued to push up from there as a new support level. So this is all pointing to more green, in my opinion, 
from what I'm seeing here on the S&P, you know, for these next couple of days, right? And if we hop here to the 20 day one hour, we can just see this on a broader basis, right? And if we're just hopping back here to the 184 hour chart, so we can see some resistance levels that we're slowly approaching here, take a look at this old support from back in the middle of September in 2018. That was roughly at about, let's see, Actually, no, that's not the one I want to show you guys. It's this next one at about 2907, which was a support level from back towards the end of September in 2019. And that's about 11, 12 points, or actually, no, my, yeah, roughly about 12, 11 points away from where we currently are now. And that is the next resistance that I'm watching for the S&P to potentially get to, right? So as of now, we're trading in between the 2885 to 28. 90 level and the 2905 level and let's just very quickly calculate how far are we from all-time highs now guys because again like I've been saying you know very obvious that each day we're pushing up here we're getting closer and closer to all-time highs and the last time that I calculated this I believe the S&P was was around like 1.7 percent off or something like that. So let's get a little brief look here. How far are we from that 2940 all time high? We're about 1.55% away. And this is literally, guys, one massive green day away from an all time high. Two pretty solid green days of 0.7% each, and a couple of mini green days of let's say 0.4 to 0.5% away from all time high. So I want you guys to answer this question right now in the comment section. Are we going to hit all-time highs this week? This week, we could potentially hit all-time highs. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section right now what your opinions are. We're 1.55% off in the S&P. I think there's a decent chance that we could hit all-time highs this week, if not next week, and I want to hear your opinion. So let's go over here to the Dow Jones, and the Dow Jones, guys, we've been talking about the $26,200 level of resistance here, which was a resistance from back towards the end of February in 2019 and the beginning of uh, November in 2018. We obviously broke those levels after some consolidation under the resistance last week. We gapped up to the next resistance, which in this case was at around $26,415-ish, and if we go to the Five day five minute chart here we can see we were holding that level of resistance as a new support this past Friday we talked about that how it was laying perfectly on that level of resistance or support rather last week towards the end of last week and today we actually gap down in the Dow Jones as well as we can see here from about 26400 flat all the way down to about 26200 where we actually maintain that 26200 level of support and now what I'm seeing here is we're pretty much trading in the horizontal pattern of 26200 and 26 400 ish right here right so we're trading in this $200 range you know in the Dow Jones and if we just hop back to the 184 hour chart you know you can see that a bit closer right we gap down we're maintaining that level and we're just trading in between here so tomorrow what are we going to see right are we going to see a potential retest up here at 26400 are we going to break out of that level to continue the uptrend pattern and at that point you know we could be shooting up to let's say 26700 one step closer to the all time highs this is what I'm going to be watching for tomorrow. Also, are we going to potentially retest the 26,200 level of support here? Are we going to pull back some more? These are things that I'm watching heading into tomorrow. So how far are we up? Oh, there goes my phone, guys. I do apologize for that if you can hear that. But let's talk about you know, the Dow Jones, you know, how far are we from all time highs compared to the 1.55% that we saw in terms of the S&P 500? So let's just take a look at this, right? So from 26, uh, 341, right, where we roughly closed today up to about 26,951 ish dollars, roughly, we're about 2.2% off from all time highs, roughly in terms of the Dow Jones 
Jones industrial average here. So we're a bit, um, a little bit further off than the S&P, but we're still, you know, a couple of strong green days away from all-time highs in terms of the Dow Jones. And let me know in the comments again, what do you guys think about this? Are we going to hit it this week, next week? I would love to to know. So let's hop over here really quickly to the NASDAQ so we can see what ended up happening here on a technical basis. Where are we trading? What levels are we looking at? How far are we from all time highs? So very simple here. I'm sure you guys can see it right off the bat. You know, the NASDAQ has been trading in between the 7,500-ish level of support and the next resistance, which is at around $7,630. This is roughly a 130 30 to 150 point range where the NASDAQ has been trading. And we can see here towards the close of the market, we want to test that level of resistance again where we ended up getting rejected the other day. And why I think there's a high possibility here that we're going to break that resistance is because take a look at this 20 day, one hour chart, guys. The Dow, or I was about to say the Dow, the NASDAQ really bounced on a higher low here off the 50 SMA from the previous. And it's looking like we're already pushing from, um, you know, above these high points from a couple of days ago. And that's just telling me the NASDAQ wants to break out of their resistance. We're pushing on for higher highs here and we already made the higher low. And honestly, the uptrend is just continuing here in terms of the NASDAQ from what I am seeing. So tomorrow, just keep an eye, guys. Are we going to break out of this level? I think there's a decent chance here tomorrow that we do break out of 76.30, the resistance that we're seeing. And from there up to the all-time highs here at about 77.28, roughly, let's see if I can get it exact so we can get the exact number here, up to 77.28, we're off about 1.26% from all-time highs here. So we've seen guys literally over the past couple of weeks, we can count a couple of different occasions here where the NASDAQ itself has moved um, more than one 1.5% 1 in a single day, right? Over these past couple of weeks slash months, that has happened multiple times. So if we see a green day, a massive green day, you know, we're going to be at all time highs in no time. And I think the NASDAQ did very well today you know, compared to the other indexes. And, you know, take a look at Apple, right? Apple stock is over $200 a share again today, up $3.10. And we're going to be doing an analysis on that here in a couple of minutes. So let's talk about what did I end up trading today, guys? What did I end up trading? So in this morning's video, guys, I was talking about Tesla stock potentially pushing out of 280. And we saw how Tesla actually opened up roughly at 280 today, and we ended up gapping down very heavily. So I'm sure you're probably asking yourself, did I take my profits? Am I still holding on to Tesla shares that I had from this past week? And the answer to that is, nope, I did not take my profits. I kind of wish I did here because we did open up pretty high this morning on Tesla, but I ended up just maintaining and holding on to those shares that I did have from last week. And for those of you guys that don't recall, last week, I actually bought into Tesla when it dropped to 260 on the Model 3 delivery miss, that bad news that we saw. I bought into Tesla and I ended up selling off roughly half of my position on the next day, which was on Friday. And I kept some of the shares for this week, which we're in right now, to have some exposure to Tesla, right? And I figured... You know, this morning that we opened up at 280, I was like, okay, are we going to continue to gap up here? Are we going to, you know, hold above that 280 support? Because 280 is a support that I was watching from a previous resistance, now a new support from a couple of months ago. We failed miserably to hold that. We gapped down very heavily all the way to 270. We got a, um, I think it was Morgan Stanley or something. We can go here to live news. Morgan Stanley cut their price. Here it is to $240 per share. And I feel like once that came out, you know, Tesla stock started to tank. And we can see that here on the one day, one minute, how quickly it started to tank, you know, roughly after that news came out at about 1050 a.m., 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But the fact or really the reason why I'm maintaining my shares is because on this longer term chart here, we are not longer, the shorter term chart on the five day, five minute, we ended up holding a higher low here on the 270 bounce from the previous low 
low at about 266. And we ended up breaking out of the 50 simple moving average resistance here. We started to maintain it as a new support. So on a technical basis here, I felt comfortable holding on to these shares, especially since we already gapped down here. I, I missed my, not really I missed my opportunity to sell. I made the decision not to sell and to hold on. And the fact that we got that higher low here, that gave me the mindset, okay, it might be a decent idea now to just hold on to these shares until tomorrow, see if we end up gapping back up to maybe 280. And from there, I can reevaluate and make my decision. So in terms of Tesla, I'm just simply holding on to my shares here. So let's talk about the only day trade that I made today, and that was in UWT. And UWT is one that I also talked about this morning. And crude oil ended up doing absolutely unbelievable today, right? And whenever crude oil is going up in price, UWT is going up in price as well. And just take a look at the one day, one minute on crude oil, guys. Literally at 8.55 a.m., 9 a.m., roughly once I uploaded that video, we were talking about the price of crude oil being roughly at about 63.20, which if we look on the 180 chart, that was a zone where it was an old resistance and we were looking for it to be a new support level. And from there, it's like a rocket, guys. We bounced off of that level. We shot up and that opened up a huge gain on UWT at the market open. And I saw how quickly crude oil was running up this morning, heading into market open. We were seeing it was pull, it was pushing up. Very small, uh, you know, very small pullbacks bouncing very quickly. Very small pullbacks bouncing very quickly. This was a very quick move. Mover. And I ended up just getting into UWT for a very quick trade here. It wasn't too crazy of a trade. I honestly got in on this pullback here on 2140. And I ended up selling on this next pump up and I, I didn't even get a 1% gain, guys. Literally, due to the speed of crude oil and due to how quick it was moving, I just wanted to play it safe here, get in and out literally within 5, 10, 20 minutes, whatever it ended up being. And I took about a 1% trade here, roughly 1% on UWT. And we can see from there, guys, it ended up closing well above, not really well above, but decently above $22 per share which if I did end up holding throughout the entire day, I would have made a decent amount more. But again, with my day trades, guys, I'm a bit more conservative. I'm okay with taking a 1% to 2% profit. I'm more of a person that, you know, likes to take profits consistently, especially when I'm trading these volatile, um, you know, leveraged ETFs here. So that is what I ended up doing in terms of my day trades. I actually took a position as well this morning in NVIDIA, guys, ticker symbol NVDA. And we were talking about this one. I believe I did talk about this one in the morning video. And we actually got a little bit of a pullback here. And we actually got a signal that we were potentially getting a pullback or we were actually um, this pre-market hours today, right? We can see this red bar here. We pulled back. I believe we pulled back to around 189 this morning, about 190 ish dollars. And that's where I ended up taking my position. Once we got this little pullback, we started to break, you know excuse me, out of these moving average resistances here, we started to trend up. I ended up taking a position roughly at about 190 to 190-ish or $190.20 roughly there. And this is a swing trade, guys. I'm planning on holding this one until we get to at least my target of about uh, $195 to $197. Like I mentioned in this morning's video, that is where I want to sell NVIDIA, right? And potentially, let's say, you know, we get to $200. That would be my next target to sell, which is around $200. And that is the previous resistance that we do see here on NVIDIA. So that is the trading update market update in a nutshell today, guys. Let me know down below in the comment section how you ended up doing today. And let's talk about very quickly some other stocks that are worth mentioning and what I'm personally watching. So not a stock that I'm actually looking to trade, but one that we got some news on today was General Electric, guys. General Electric ended up getting their price target slashed by an analyst, and this sucks for all you GE investors out there. I really am sorry about this, but we got a big slash 
Um, I forget who ended up doing it. And if we look here, we can see that that's what it was. JP Morgan, they ended up slashing their price target to $5 per share. The stock did not react too well to that. We ended up tanking from the open at $9.50 all the way down to $9.15. It was down about like 7% at that point, 6 7% or something. But we ended up closing on a nice little upswing here on GE. Again, I'm not looking to trade this one whatsoever, not looking to invest in it. Just figured I'd let you guys know about this, update you guys just in case any of you are investors or didn't know about this. Just be, uh, you know, what's it called? Just be mindful about that. So that's what I'm uh, really the news on GE here. Again, we saw Apple break into the $200 level today. And we actually talked about Apple yesterday in my top 10 April stocks. I'm watching video. We gapped up from the 195 support all the way up to the 200 resistance today. So tomorrow, let's see what are we going to do, right? Are we going to maintain this $200 level? Are we going to maintain it as a new support and then potentially start to trend back up to the next spot, which in this case is $200, uh, $210 per share. This is something that I'm going to be watching for a potential play in Apple. And I know a lot of you guys are trading Apple. Congrats if you did end up swinging Apple. I'm an investor in Apple. One of my biggest long-term positions. I sure am happy with the way that it's performing. It's been performing here over the past couple of months, especially since I was buying shares all throughout the months of October and December. As many of you guys know, especially those who've been longer-term viewers um, you know, here on this channel. So I'm watching Apple tomorrow guys. I'm watching NVIDIA very closely. I'm watching Tesla to see, are we going to rebound from that higher low that we made today on the smaller term charts? I'm watching crude oil. Are we going to get a pullback on crude oil? I'm very interested to see if I can trade UWT again tomorrow. If we do get a bit of a pullback on that one. You know, JNUG ended up doing pretty solid today, up to $10.23 today at the close. Gold ended up maintaining a nice new support here. If we just hop over here to the 30-day, you can probably see it. And we can see roughly at this level, right? Old resistance, if I just draw that out, old resistance here at about 1301. It's maintaining that as a new support right now with the one day, one minute, really showing a strong consolidation at that level. So tomorrow. Are we going to pop up to 1304 again, which is another resistance that we're watching now? Are we going to go back up to 1308, which we were able to get to earlier this morning when I recorded the morning video? These are th some things that I'm watching for gold. So at V is actually another one that I'm watching for a potential swing trade here. We gapped down pretty heavily on at V this morning, and we ended up maintaining a higher low from the previous on the 50 simple moving average support. Now, what I want to see before getting into ATV and what I've been saying over the past couple of times that I've mentioned ATV is I want to see a break out of the $48 level. This is a stronger resistance where we've been getting rejected over the past couple of months, really since the you know middle to end of January. We got rejected there back towards the end of March. We got rejected there again last week of trading. But now that we're maintaining the 50 SMA at a higher low, and we potentially, and if we potentially break out of this level tomorrow, I think that would be a good sign to potentially get into ATV here as a swing trade up to the next resistance, which we can clearly see is roughly at about 51 to $51.30 ish cents. So at V watching that one very closely here tomorrow. And that's honestly all I've got for you guys, right? You know, Apple, Tesla, you know, at V Nvidia, those are probably my top four stocks as of right now. Of course, I'm watching, you know, natural gas, gold and crude oil. Those are my three go-tos in terms of day trading, in terms of leveraged ETFs. Let me know down below, what are you guys watching today? What did you do today in terms of trading? Did you take any long positions? Are you swing trading? Are you staying mostly in cash due to, you know, the state of the market here that we are getting to all-time highs and all of these worries about the economic slowdown, economic growth slowdown? Are you staying in all, you know, mostly cash? I would love to know down below. So I'm going to end off this video 
video here, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free, again, to hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you did enjoy this video and you see some other content on the channel that you enjoy, and hit that notification bell while you're at it. You get notified every time that I do make a video. And again, I appreciate all of you guys watching out there. There's going to be two videos up here that you can see. Click on one of those videos to get some more knowledge, some more, you know, information on trading, the stock market, investing, you know, long-term investing, personal finance, stuff like that, guys. So again, I appreciate you all watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.